right, we're, blo- we're bloody well we're recording. We're live. We are live from our bedroom, your bedroom actually, <laughs> your well, studio li- room, little studio room. And we're not live because we're gonna edit this. So I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I try to do minimal <laughs> editing because you know these these are long. It's right. nothing edited, so everything is one go. <laughs> You know, uh, we need to make some... Uh, I mean, I feel like we need to speak something out that not only this is the third guitar session, is that... Uh, how should I say it? My third in life guitar session and I'm actually learning guitar because I don't think I ever mentioned in one of the other two jams and... Uh, any brilliant idea that comes out is because of me. Any messed up one is because of Matt, yeah? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> because he's teaching me. <laughs> no, uh, the idea is uh, that uh, Nylon UK Music, a.k.a. Matthew McGrath, this lovely person here who made this, again, pristine setup, is my beautiful tutor. And, uh, yeah, we're experimenting some feelings. That's what I feel we're doing. And that's what I think anyone should do. Mm, nice. Today I feel less inspired, so I have premium cider from beautiful Sweden. And uh, cheers to this new oh, jam ho- session. Yeah. Oh, let me. Let's get some let's sweet ASMR action on this. Hopefully this doesn't oh. fizz up everywhere. No. Oh, I like the smell of it. The sound and the clicking. Oh, don't break the nail. This could be our new music. Yeah, listen to the sparkling bubbles. Yeah, cheers. Mm. Mm. This is all about the guitar maniacs, you know. Guitar maniacs. Yeah. We might get that, print that on a t-shirt. Yeah, guitar maniacs. Or a mug or something. <laughs> cool. You know, like, if you don't know what to do, just, uh, yeah, browse around, see maybe what others do, and... Maybe you get some inspiration because I, 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 I feel, you know what, what I, yeah, this is from my experience. Like before, like a long time when I was producing music electronically, I didn't, I knew briefly piano. I was always waiting for feeling to come to create, which I think that's a bit, a big fallacy because... You just have to, yeah, do it and do it and do it. And sometimes you get the spark or whatever. But I think if you run for the spark, you might never maybe get it. Or it yeah, might you got to kind of flex that muscle. The more you do it, then the easier and easier it will become yeah. to come up with little riffs or ideas. Or maybe there's days where you're trying to come up with a song and maybe it's not flowing or you're coming up with nothing. Uh, but you just got to persist and push through. Because what I've noticed is that I might have a day or two and I'm like, I've spent hours in, I've come up with nothing. But then the next day, all of a sudden, just pick up the guitar. I'm just like, whoa, how did that happen? But it's still something. It is not nothing. Because otherwise, the next day would have been nothing because you haven't done nothing before. See, after two and a half years, I'm already giving advice. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) No, 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 I'm joking. I'm not that good with advices and I don't feel like I'm the man in... Uh, to do that but um the person but uh yeah 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 yeah. perfect uh, example but for your process Mm. for your all of your songs by the way go on uh, spotify and look for search for nylon that's it nylon Nylon. i think it yeah (laughs) i I don't know i gotta double check all these links (laughs) links in description (laughs) down below See, we're so hooked into music, we forget. <laughs> yeah, we forget. We're new to the YouTube game, okay? <laughs> we're new to this. All right, we're trying our best. Ah, uh, yeah, you can't fail if you don't try, you know? <laughs> there you go. Cool. Uh, Sorry, I got a tune. Okay, yeah. You know, we're professionals here. <laughs> it's always good to remind that we need to, you need to start with tuning, you know? Yeah, good yeah. habit, always. Yeah first time you pick up the guitar it's funny if you day, check it if you have a performance or like an open mic you go there you're all anxious nervous you go at the mic you feel like you want to bang it out fast because probably that's like the sort of that nerves, you know adrenaline. nerves and overwhelm you're like and everything sounds like fuck and you can't stop you know now you're not stopping because you want to finish it but you might not even hear that you're off tune and then you're like oh wow i nailed it and people might be like oh. 
<laughs> when you hear that really stifled. Yeah. You're like, oh, nailed that one. Now I'm starting to think, are we going to play today? <laughs> no, okay, we're now just a podcast, a video podcast where we just hold instruments. Yeah, yeah, well, it's good. <laughs> you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> just pick on the light. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're having too much fun. Let's okay. be serious. Let's, let's I, 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 listen to this. I, I think I have a little idea. Okay, cool. Nothing special. <clears throat> <laughs> Because uh, you're looking what I'm playing and you're like, just fucking change. <laughs> I'm not doing no, anything. No, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> no, 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 no. And that's the thing. That's why I like these videos. It's good to see this process of us repeating something over and over because it's how you do it. You know, there might be some really amazing people or maybe after a while you can just come up with something and you kind of nail it from the get-go. But honestly... Jimi Hendrix, you, like... Pfft. Yeah, well, honestly, you'll spend a while just kind of noodling around and then you'll hear something that you like and then repeat it over and over so you, you remember it, you become more and more familiar with it. Uh, and to do that, you have to repeat it, you know? And so that's the thing, maybe... Connect to the vibe and the flow. Yeah, no, no, I, I was joking. I, I, I like as you're looking and uh, I, I, did, I am quite... Uh... Uh, persuasive into this messy imagination <laughs> into my messy and I'm starting to create little stories you know and like oh yeah you're sending subtle things like change it change <laughs> no, no, no no I was no, liking it because no. in my mind it's just da -da. yeah let me mm -hmm, go again mm -hmm, sorry about that mm -hmm. I think that's so that's the idea and I like it how we've kind of done it before and I think the way I like to work now is if I come up with a cool little riff or a cool little idea I will then try and look at the at the neck really and try and work out what scale is this based within or kind of based upon because then that will really help us to come up with some ideas if we want to add some chords and then this can be like a nice little lead melody on there uh, and I think this time, though, because before I feel like Bogdan, you've just kind of improvised and come up with something. And then we've had to look at the notes that you were playing and kind of reverse engineer it back to working out what scale. But I feel like you kind of know already what scale you're, you're, you're basing this on. <laughs> oh, well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think, and you, yeah, I think you're right. Because I know what notes I'm playing. So it would be from E to D. A to G, F sharp, E, F sharp, E, D. So having this F sharp, it doesn't sound that majorish for me. So I wouldn't go for a G major. It would be a E minor. Well, because the only thing is, if I'm kind of looking at maybe what pattern your left hand's working in. So this is quite a good tip. Say if you find you're playing a couple notes, you're repeating them, and that's a part of your melody. Instead of playing, because instead of playing them in the order you're playing for the melody, try and play them in order from low to high, because then you can start to actually see if it's following a bit of a scale pattern. So for example, you'll go in like this. So, so those are um, if we ignore the open strings. Uh -huh. 
So you're saying. That's it. Oh, I got you. So this could be a B minor pentatonic. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mm, so we got the B minor. Oh, yeah, because I went to the B as well. So let's say that's B minor pentatonic. So key of B minor. Okay. Is what we're working in. So now we can just go, okay, what are what the, the chords? What are the chords or this what are the notes that make up B minor? So sometimes we can... A chord test for me. Like, oh, I feel like school. <laughs> I was like, I'm with the teacher here. Shit. <laughs> Did I learn the chords? <laughs> it's his fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're looking at what? Because we have minor, it's going to be still uh, first, fourth, and fifth. For the oh, they'd be minors. Yeah, yeah. for the well, minors. That's if we want to... So we got the we F might... sharp minor. Well, I was going to say, let's just work out the notes. You have B, C, and then you have... Well, would it be, though? Oh, C sharp, sorry, yeah. Yeah. C sharp. So I don't know if it's easier to try and... B, C work sharp, out the... D, E, F sharp. Because it's so wait, but it's easier because the B minor. I was gonna say work out the relative major. Yeah, so the relative major is um, B G. Uh, sorry, B C D. Yeah, so we have two sharps. There the F sharp and the C sharp. So yeah. what? So what we just done there is because we know uh, if we're if we're looking at the major key, for example, you know you're playing in a major key. The relative minor is going to be the minor key that uses exactly the same notes and, and chords. And so if you're in the major key, it's going to be the sixth note. That's going to be your minor. And so what we've kind of worked out is that if we know we're in a minor key, we just count up by three to get to the relative major. So we went B, C, D. And so we kind of know that D has got two sharps. Your F sharp and, and your C sharp. Yeah. Nice. So you have, yeah, C sharp minor, F sharp minor. Well, if we're kind of looking or at I'm the key of D, then technically the C sharp, that would be your diminished Diminished, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which we could play diminished. So it's going to be, yeah, going to have for sure the major is easier for me because you have D major, you have C major, uh, no, sorry, uh, G major and A major. Yeah. Nice. nice. And I think I much prefer doing that. Even if I know I'm in a minor key, I always like to revert it back to the relative major. Uh, just because, well, I think I like the major keys first and the minor keys and the relative minors. So, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I like to just revert it back to the major key, work them out. And so what we've got is chords one, four, and five. They're going to be major if we're in the major key. Two, three, six are going to be minors. And chord seven will be diminished. So we can kind of use that to work out what chords we can uh, jam around with. So, yeah, then we have the B minor, the F sharp minor, and it's left E minor. There you go. Yeah, so we've got D major, uh, E minor, F sharp minor. G major, A major, B minor, C sharp diminished. Okay, cool. So now we know what chords we're playing. We know what key we're in. Uh, and you kind of, you've got one position to play around with. So it's your B minor pentatonic, or you might change that to just the normal B minor if you want to chuck in the extra two notes that we've kind of, we miss or that we take out from the minor pentatonic. Uh, 
Mm. But now we got to try and at least maybe just tap a foot or something, just so we got mm, something to kind of keep us in time, <laughs> just so we can start working out our phrasing. Or if we, for example, we might go, okay, let's make this four four. So we start thinking about the time signature, you know. Uh, you don't always have to do this. You might just play something by the feel, which is good. And then you can think, oh, what is the time signature of it? Yeah, know? it's still for me. I mean, I like because, uh, yeah, I get the feeling. And it's always the same, like, I feel like, yeah, I'm in time. You know, you play and... So you, you start and I'll try and tap where I feel like the beats are. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking, where is the beat now? It kind of started, I felt like when I was tapping, you was playing a note, but then there's a note where you kind of delay it a little bit and you went, and then you went up to okay. the D, and so yeah, because I had the feeling that to be in time, I need to delay. That's uh, uh, so everything now. I'm kind of relating my in, inside metronome, which can be very messy. Don't get me wrong; <laughs> it's not adjusted. But uh, I don't know. I'm always thinking like the inside metronome, like how the click goes inside. You know, like click, click. So click. I don't know if this will help. Is even if we're not trying to count how many beats are in a bar or how many beats or how long the phrase is or how many beats it is uh try and just when you're playing it try and feel where the downbeat is or the notes that you might be accenting in comparison to the other notes so for example you see how you start you go in so the first decision is is that first note on the beat or is that before and so then is it it might be and one so is that the kind of where the downbeat is or is it the note before it? Because it could go one, two, three. Pulling it into time now. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. So it's sorry to interrupt. So I feel like the first note is definitely on four and. And then I feel like that second note, the D that you're playing, that feels like beat one. So it's like, and one, two, and three, and three, and four. Ah, so I'm starting one. before a classical structure, like before you the bar in a way. Yeah, before yeah. I have so like a. Oh, that's actually cool. One, it's something different. Two, three. You have like four, a little intro, one, which is off two, beat. No? Three, yeah, that's off the beat. You're playing on the and. Yeah. Yeah, because so we it's... could think of that as being off the beat. Yeah. And that's what's quite nice. A phrase doesn't always have to start on one. And if anything, it can be maybe a bit more interesting if it starts on an and or kind of off of the beat. Gotta uh, be weird, though, like us. Gotta be, gotta be weird. <laughs> no, you don't have to be. <laughs> you need to be. Or, or you you will end up being. <laughs> or you end up being. <laughs> No, but, but nice. I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, end. I didn't see. This is actually I don't know. I feel like it's a case study because how I translate it is that I'm starting. So I'm thinking already when I'm doing that, it's like one, two. But now when oh, you're saying you're going, one, yeah, oh, you think that's the one. Yeah, but now it when you're saying you want it to. No, it actually sounds much interesting when you're saying four and four and one. 
Yeah, because I'm just trying to feel, if I simplify your melody, it's like one, two, three, So what's even more interesting, and I can kind of see why this has happened, we've been learning a song which has swing rhythm in there, and you're playing with swing. Yeah. Because it's not even. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I... Like, yeah. Yeah. See, this is still uh, a bit, well, of course, with practice, and especially this uh, helps a lot because... It's nice if you get it from the inside, but it's beautiful if you actually know a bit what you're doing, Maybe you know, because that's yeah. why I didn't, I felt like there is something happening there, but I didn't think it's the swing involved. But, I, but yeah, yeah, that, I just... that's how the interior is like. I mean, I cherish a lot the moments that, yeah, you get the feeling and the interior, but... It's swell when you connect them, you know, like, oh, you have the swing, you have the timing. You're playing the offbeat before the intro. So this is a nice thing to try and do. Is say if you're coming up with a melody, and let's say you're maybe not too sure of the rhythm that you're playing. You might like the order of the notes. You think this sounds nice. But trying to work out the rhythm is important because say if you want to record it or play it with someone else, you, you need to know or maybe not need to know, but it just helps a lot if you do know the rhythm or if you can count along and play it. And so uh, even if you find it a bit hard to count and play, even in your mind or, or, you know, hum it or sing it aloud, kind of the tune, it doesn't even have to be in tune because from what you're playing, <laughs> in my mind I was thinking we're going da da Da, 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 da. I was doing like this. Nice. So now you just feel unbalanced. Yeah, because what started to happen there when you just played it is you kind of felt like you might have chopped off a couple beats to get back to the beginning of the loop of this riff. Because you know we're going and one and two and three and four and three and four and one, two, three, four and one. But I feel like before you might have gone. It's like, oh, rushing. Yeah, it's like, oh, maybe a couple of beats might have. Oh. gone missing there again which is you could do that you might want to have a bit of a weird measure where it's like four beats and two beats or something like that uh, but make a decision to kind of pick one as opposed to just randomly playing it and then as opposed to maybe feeling not too certain where the beat is or how long it is you know just even trying to hum it and clap and just kind of count you know how many times you clap because then you might go oh that's six beats long then you might go Oh, or maybe we're in a time signature where it's 6-4 or, or something like that, you know. I'm actually uh, very untrained with the, yeah, with the feeling of like, am I in 6-4? Am I in 3-4? I kind of have implanted in my head the 4-4 four, because four it's the most... Comment, yeah. yeah comment. But honestly, I think uh, even now, if I'm writing, I'm not really thinking about, oh, what yeah, you're gonna what the time signature it. is. You more come up with something that you like the sound of, and then you try and figure out how long it is or what it can fit in. And really, that's more from me recording stuff, if I'm honest, because then you set up like a little loop and you record, and you'll be, you kind of go, hold up, this isn't fitting into a bar of 4-4. Four, four. And then you kind of, then what I used to do, I might go, five four and then try play it and be like no it still doesn't fit maybe six four or and stuff like that which is just quite time consuming trial and error so, well trial and error can do it uh or even with your phone if you just record it because you might find it a bit difficult to count and play at the same time so just record it try and play it in in time or what you think is in time and then just listen back to it and try and count along you know try and work out where the beat is 
And what's nice, what we're doing now, Bogdan can just loop it. And I was just sitting here and I was trying to feel it. And honestly, what I was doing, I was trying to count from the first note you played thinking, is that beat one? But then I felt like, you know, a lot of the notes which you may be accenting, they weren't really falling on the downbeat. And not all the time, but most of the time, like the stronger notes, they'll probably fall on the downbeat, you know, kind of like when we're bobbing our head, it's like, ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum And that's when our kind of head drops is on the beat. And when you've lifted it up, it's on the and or, or off of the beat. So if you do your jam sessions, you need to book uh, Mr. Nylon UK Music. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> book him in time, mates. <laughs> Otherwise, you might get stuck. So I'll do the tap. So I'll just go and three and four and one. I rushed. Yeah, so uh, and three and four and one. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, I mean, it's very good two, what you're doing. I, I'm, I need to connect to you because I'm getting confused too. So, three, can you go like from three? Yeah, so I can go three and four and one and two. Nice. Three, four. So the and and so one and, yeah. and one and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So a, a little bit early on that and. I think you might have came in on the four, maybe. Uh, so I think what's nice now, that intro, the part at the beginning, you've I feel like you've got that locked in. You're going, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So now we just need to work out when does that next little phrase, because in my mind you've got the, could be the first part, then we've got... whatever that second part is. So we've got the first part, then we can call this the second part, and then this could be the third part. You know, I'm not, I can't quite remember what you've done. So yeah, we've kind of got three, we've got three parts. So at least we've worked out the beginning part, which is, and one, and two, and three, and four, could be that maybe uh -huh. i feel like what we're calling the second part of this little melody i came in on the two and actually so i went and one and two and three and four and one but i don't know if that's a melody you want to play can i play again what i'm feeling yeah. I'm messing it up, I think, right? Relax, you're kind of rushing a little bit. I'm rushing. Calm, calm, relax. Oh nice and chill. <laughs> yeah, we got b b injury. <laughs> we got an injury. <laughs> Medic! Uh, so what was happening, I was trying to count along, and I feel like there's a beat or two at the end of it. Like This is if we want to keep it in 4-4, four, four, for example. So I feel this is like a two-bar melody. And so the first phrase definitely fits within 4-4, four, four, but then that second phrase because is I'm maybe... Rushing. 
yeah, if you're rushing, then yeah, you're kind of chopping off a couple beats, a beat or two at the end. Because say if I try and play what you're playing, I'll try and count along. Okay. We've got, uh, and I'll take it nice and chill. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you kind of feel that gap that we've got there. Whereas I feel like you've, you've been playing it this way. Uh, and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Uh -huh. So if we want this to be in four, four, when you're at the end of your two bars, when you come back to looping the riff, mm -hmm. you're then coming in on the three and and not the four okay, and okay, okay, okay. so it's either wait an extra beat or, or you're writing something in, no, but you're in seven instead of uh, like four, yeah. four yeah this is another thing with exploration i think you don't have to get that messy <laughs> well as <laughs> we said before keep it simple to begin yeah. with maybe uh yeah so i think i'll try and count so in a way you could just hold that extra beat at the end and wait mm -hmm. for the four. Don't get overexcited. One. Yeah, yeah. Hold, 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 the, hold my horses. I'm actually like a mad dog, even with this this mic, because I want to chew it like, <laughs> and I I can't wait. You know, it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'll count. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll act like the metronome. Uh, three and four and one and two and three. So, so it'd be and one and two and Wait, three. This is and so interesting because I feel one. it's something simple, but actually it's not that very. Well, we're just I trying mean, to work out the yeah, the right. rhythm. It's always hard to try and play and count or play with a metronome. If we keep it this tempo, so we're slowing it down a little bit. So I'll count this in a little bit. So we've got three and four and one and two. So come in on the two and. So after you've gone and one and two and three and three and four and one. That's kind of like the first bar pretty much we've got. And two and three and four and one. That's it. So and one and two. I feel like that's the rhythm. So if we increase the speed, it'll be... And, and one, and two, and three, and four, and I rushed, one. right? Okay. You rushed, yeah. So it's the two and when that second kind of phrase comes two, in. Two and, here. So it's and... It's going to be and three. And three. Yeah. Jesus, this off... I mean, I kind of like the off beats. Probably yeah, this it's is nice what playing I'm, on the, yeah, it's, on the uh, and... But, but they, feel... they they always mess me up, like, when you actually do what you're doing, you know, like, because that's why, I, let, me, let me not just count, one second, and you can tell me if I'm complete, like, very off, so... Still off. That was super close, it's just super the last close. note, you kind of hesitated a bit. So I stay too long. That was it. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay, I, I felt that. Yeah. That's why I was getting confused because when I was doing the last one you, and you were counting one here, I felt I'm one on the new bar and I need to right. play one, wait, two and three and four and again. Uh -huh. Yeah, so when you're kind of repeating this phrase... As you could, I think you felt it then. You're like, oh, I'm coming in on the four. And it's like, I should be coming in on the one. 
Yeah, yeah, like, okay. With that then, kinda... So then, yeah, at one point I introduced the B, so that would be probably something like on the three end or something like that, and then play four end again. So it goes. Yeah, so you can play around. So okay, you so that note. three and four and one and two. I so rushed so two and. So two and means two and no, no so two two and, and three. three. Three and three. And so in three. a way, we've got and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and uh -huh. one. Okay. So you just got to decide where you want to chuck that B note, and that could be the melody. It's just kind of working out where you want to place that that okay. B. Really. Can I try again with yeah. the pulse and? So I you're rushed. you're still kind of chopping off a beat at the end. Uh, I I had the feeling it was half beat. Okay. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So that bomb bomb is on the and one. So, do you know what I think would be quite nice? Say the first time you play it, we don't even worry about the beat. You just kind of go and one, and you have three beats of nothing, you know. It might give the rhythm guitar a bit of room to do a little sum in. Then maybe the second time you can add the B in within them kind of three beats we've got in that second bar. Sorry, is the... Um, can you say again the... So the first time you play the melody... Uh, we don't worry about going to the B, and that's actually the way you played it. So, because you just went uh, and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So we started again. So you just had that nice little gap, which would be quite nice, you know, let the melody breathe a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the second time you chucked in the B, which was nice. We added a slight variation because mm -hmm. if we're just repeating something over and over, it might get a little bit repetitive or a little bit yeah. uh, boring. So then the second time you could go and one and two and, and three. Do you feel the because I feel the, I mean, the, yeah, you're right with the swing when you're counting. Yeah, I, now, maybe I'm I hope I'm not confusing myself because I'm thinking of the swing track and the swing track you have three kind of notes in a half of beat. Oh, right? uh, so with that one. Because we had semi quavers, yeah. so that's why it's it was trying to squeeze three semi quavers into half a beat. Whereas here, it's because we're we're not counting semi quavers. We're not going one e and uh, two. We're yeah, going one we're going and quavers. two. So it's quavers. So in a way, it's. So you feel like there's a swing. Yeah, because the way we're counting, the way you're playing, it's ba, 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 ba. ba. Whereas if we played that straight, we'd just be going three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. You can really feel it there, just going. But you're going. Yeah, I feel that. 
So Aye. that's the difference. So yeah. this is playing it straight where there's no swing. So we're keeping it really even. Yeah, and then with boring. Uh, well, it depends. But no. hearing yeah. it with the swing and then you play it straight, yeah, I much prefer it with the swing. There's just more kind of flow, a bit more character to it, you know, a bit more interesting. Nonsense. You know? Uh, but it kind of depends. You might want it to go, ba, 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 but this is like, ba, 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 yeah. ba, ba. no, the, the even one sounds precise. It's kind of robotic in a way yeah. because it's super even, you know. But this is like, ba, it sounds more jaunty. Ba, 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 ba. It's fitting within 4 4. We're repeating a melody the first time you're playing it. We won't include the B, just give it some room. And then that second time round, then chuck the B in. So now you've kind of got a four bar section in a way. And then you could repeat that four bars and that would be cool. You know, that's that's enough to keep it interesting. And it's a nice little melody. And you haven't kicked in the tune. <laughs> <laughs> well, now now we got to decide what, yeah, actually, what chords do you want? We're t shadowing a lot with the knowledge. So I'm very curious how you blend in now. Let's see. Well, we as we kind of worked out at the beginning, yeah. some of the chords. So, so what I'm going to try and do, and I, I like to do this sometimes, is even before trying to play the chords, I'll just try and more play like the root note of them just to see how that sounds, you know, because it's a bit easier to just play one note as opposed to maybe a whole bar chord or a, or a chord, you know. So what I'm trying to really, I'm relying on my ear, I'm trying to, play some of these root notes of the chords that we've worked out and just see if I like how it sounds with the current note you're playing in the melody. So if I start with the a B minor, you're going E, B. So that's going to fit. But then you go in... E, D, E, D. I go E, D. Oh, E, D. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm playing the B. Well, let's just but try that. But that. that's good because it might be contrasting, right? Not well, so. if you're hitting the D, D, E, F, G, A... That's quite a distance. But then the thing is, but the B, C, D will be part of the B minor. So I think it will fit. So let's try that. Okay. Three and four and one and two and three. So now this is my next decision. I've got to go, what will fit with the E? Because that's the F sharp. So I like it when I go low. So I might yeah, go... Yeah, I was wanting to ask you... Oh, even better, I could go. Can I? So, let me try and. Oops, sorry. Three and four and one. D. Okay, so if I follow your notes to begin with, it will give me a good starting off platform and then we might want to vary it but i like that straight away the yeah. b minor yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so let's try that again yeah, okay. what i'm going to do different this time because i went to an a major at the end but you're playing the d i didn't quite like the sound of that so i'm now just going to play a d major for your last part of that phrase let's give it a go three and four and one and two just had a quick break quick little break physiological break <laughs> yeah we've got to <laughs> let the mind unwind you gotta empty sometimes <laughs> well it sounds nice yeah i, I, I especially like... with the chords coming in i'm like oh yeah, it sounded that, nice that and sounds whole. crispy man mm. let's bang it on let's crisp up some nice frequencies but uh I'm liking the melody. It's nice and relaxed. And I think that swing vibe really just, I don't know, I picture like Frodo, like running off into the Hobbit Again, Hills it's or so something. Funny. You get, I like it. You get, I don't get anything. I, I'm not, again, I'm, I, I, I just feel it. And it's interesting because you're like Frodo. Yeah, Hobbit. I can picture. Uh, yeah, that. And now if I'm thinking, yeah, I, I feel like I'm somehow riding, you know, like. Or like waves, and that's the thing. Waves, like, shh, shh, yeah. Shh, 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 shh. It's kind of like that flow, you know. And of course, I this might be interesting after. 
wouldn't say master it, maybe mm, more. But I'm a bit more confident. It might be interesting. It might sound probably more interesting uh, if you play it faster. Like, uh, yeah, we can play speed. with tempo. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, changing the tempo can really change the feel uh, of of an idea. Cool. So. I think I've kind of worked out the chords. It's going to be four chords. We like keeping it simple. Uh, so B minor, F sharp minor, then I go to the D, and then in that gap, I go to A, and then B minor. Because I feel like the A kind of helps to send this back to the, the, the B minor. Mm. Or it's a nice stepping stone to get to the, the, the B minor that I'm starting off with. So let's try it. Okay. Three and four. And two. And three and four. And one and two. And three and four. And one and two. And three and four. And one and two. And three and four. And one. Sorry, I made a mistake. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I was like, what's? I went to a D. I was like, no, but that's I, I missed cool. the bloody string. I was like, <laughs> with the hammer ons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I'm saying to like with the hammers and pull offs too. Yeah, yeah chuck them techniques yeah. in. It just keeps it a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I do, I'll keep it simple. I'm just playing a chord for two beats at a time. I'm just going one and two and three and four and one oh. and two. And oh. three. You feel it, you know, like... Sorry, I, I, I counted completely wrong. I went, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay. As I'm changing to the F sharp, I'm playing the B from my B minor chord, but that's when you hit your uh, the open fifth string, which is an A, and so that yeah, do clashes a, a little F bit. So that's why I want to go... So I'm actually going to lift off the bar. So instead of playing the B on my fifth string on the second fret, I'm going to play an A exactly the same as you. Maybe if I can go. Let me play the melody and. Oh, sorry. So what I just had then, if I play exactly the same note as you, okay, that might be nice. But sometimes it's good to create uh, a bit of variety or at least a bit of separation. So I'm going to play the same note, but instead of the fifth string open, I'm just going to play the octave above. So I'm going to pick the I'm going to pick the second fret on the third string, which is an A. So that'll be nice. So when you hit your gonna go ah. because if i play the same note so we're playing the same note same time but yeah you're octave apart yeah and i think Using it creates pitches. yeah it creates more separation you know so what if you go higher higher well because i'm trying to keep my chords close ah. you know so the higher a would be here but this is where it might sound a bit weird if i'm going Like, <laughs> that's quite far away whereas if I go see it's a lot more closer to the range that I'm playing within so it won't seem quite as random if I go you know, oh. it wakes you up in a way it's like, it's like, oh, something oh, slips something, out yeah, that, <laughs> it's like because sometimes you know with songs like this they they get you in a mood and you're like uh, but then oh, oh where did that turn? Well, Sometimes it's nice it could... to create some uh, surprise, yeah. Yeah, surprise or, I mean, it's still called like harmony, but is it? Can you say like contrasting harmony? Because you're still uh, in the same harmonical. 
yeah, tune, I don't know. but your to... frequency wise is yeah, it's very contrasting. Yeah, the pitch is the pitch. Yeah, when yeah. frequency is well, if I'm well, using frequency correct and terms, pitch, yeah, they're kind of the same thing. Oh, okay, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that would be. Well, it'd be con contrasting compared to where I'm playing, definitely. It's kind of like we just try one for fun? Oh, yeah, so... Can we... I kind of like it, okay, in a way. Well, I'm serious. I'll try, all right. <laughs> I yeah, don't yeah. know, when you play it, I feel like, oh! <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, let's... Well, let's give it a go. Yeah. So, three, and four, and one, and two... I feel like that boop, it's, it's that element that still fits, but it's not expected. Do you know what? This is what, I, it's like alien. Mm. In my mind. But yeah, how do you uh, see it? I want to try it yeah. with okay. an octave yeah. lower. But do you know what? In my mind, because as well, well, you know how I can kind of picture stuff. But also when I hear, it might just be a guitar or two or like a stripped down version of a song but in my mind i can always i start picturing it like a full production so that could be like a piano just really like nice reverb a little bit delayed just ding ding, ding just every so often for that point there as opposed to me trying to play it on guitar which is a little bit awkward i can just go but at the same time this is where if we were recording it and like multi-tracking it and laying it up you could just have like a Really nice. Mm -hmm. So we could add that in the. We can add that in pre-production, in post. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me try the octave lower. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two. Yeah, now when uh, you play the A, I don't sense it that much. Yeah, because it's not standing out as much. Because yeah, a, you know, much I, more I closer. think that could go nicely in the post production. Oh, should we try this? Shall I play the chords as like an intro, and then you come in? Sounds okay. Sounds. I got me because I don't know. <laughs> so I can play the chords twice. So, so now you'd I need be coming to count in. You. I need to count now, you in my head. So this is actually a good and practice. Four so, and one. Two, so can you please play? Do you don't count. Let me count. Okay. So I can know if I'm counting correct. Well, I'll just loop it a couple times. Yes. And maybe you count in your mind. And when you feel like, oh, I feel like I'm in time. Yeah, come in or start counting aloud, and then yeah, we can see that. I feel it's important. Okay, ready. No, a little bit early. You're in time, nice. Uh, 
Let's let's work on that little bit now. I feel when I, if I'm not wrong, when I played the B on the end, it it blends nice with. I don't know what you're playing because I was trying to. Yeah, yeah. I do, in my head, I can't translate for the to my current knowledge where you are all the time, like what chord and so on. But when I played on the end, it was interesting because. It was you were playing something and then that one was coming. It was yeah, because I'm coming in on the beat, so I'm like yeah. boom, and then you're Dah. yeah, yeah, so I'm off the beat, yeah. So you you won only with the B. So yeah, let's just try the B because I'm playing an A and it's kind of clashing because you're playing the B, so it's clashing a little bit there. So oh, maybe I uh, I might try a G because G A B. That'll be my third. Let's try that. So we'll just repeat with, with the, the B. B. Yeah. Three and four and four. Sorry. Yep. Three and Trying to think, so B. somehow, yeah, maybe I'm. I don't feel. I mean, I feel the B, but I don't feel when I, the rhythm of it, like when I'm playing it. Oh, when you're coming in, yeah. yeah so I, I feel it has room, but uh, maybe I should try on the two. Not on the on the two, two. or you could try on the three, because that's when I'm playing the, the chord. Yeah. Because if I'm honest, I wasn't think or counting too much. I wasn't counting at all. I was more just trying to see what sound I like. I was thinking, would an E minor work with it? I was playing the same, so yeah. You know, with the B minor, the G not so much. The A no. If I play a C sharp minor seven, it's got the B in there, and that's like a more chilled. Yeah. So then I'd be going. Uh, Oh, it, but I feel like it might change the mood too much. But let's try it with yeah, your yeah, melody yeah, yeah, and let's see. For, for the sake of it, yeah. Three and four. Because B and C sharp <laughs> clashes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, do you, do you know, this might be me trying to change your melody a bit. But if you go B, A, so if you kind of resolve down to the A, then Back I can the still, a. I can not change my chords then, you know? Well, ah, uh, B, A, B, A, I can go. Yeah, even hit the open or. Yeah, so keep the B on the legato. So I'm kind of changing ah, your melody a little bit, but it's like, bam, bam. So that could be like, and three. Oh, that could be and three. If you want. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's give it a try. Three and four and one. I like yeah, that. I, I like it too. It feels it like kind of fits. Yeah, the, the end B 
and A on the three, uh, it resonated a lot with what you're playing on the three. Well, yeah, because I'm playing an A and you're going to an A, so that's why it's like, ah, yeah. oh, it kind of resolves. Yeah. It feels quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's another idea. Ah! Yeah, so that's pre maybe that could be like the a verse and you're playing the melody or it could be the main part of the song. That could be the chorus for you to decide and work out. So really, you could try and work out another section. So we've kind of done this last time where we maybe changed a chord or something or you started playing a melody in a slightly different position on the neck to give you more ideas and to have a kind of contrasting idea. No, but I think that's that's good. That's nice. You got an idea there, you know? And so to kind of recap it all, uh, we worked out to begin with, you was playing pretty much a B minor pentatonic scale. And then we kind of worked out what's the relative oh, major, major key. Yeah. And we worked that out as being D major. And so from knowing that we're in D major or B minor, uh, we could work out the chord. So that gave me a good starting off place for knowing what chords to use. And then we worked on the rhythm to kind of work out where the downbeats were, what notes we were accenting. And then just at the very end, that B wasn't sitting too well with the chords I was playing tried a few different chords but I was, just, I was just thinking go back to the A or play an A because that's what I was playing but it kind of fits and resolves you know and you know this time I'm honestly I didn't feel my left hand freaking like tense though up. I'm missing the strings uh, I like to miss <laughs> but you're nice and but, relaxed uh, yeah 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 much more relaxed you know yeah that's thing. maybe I, I and I don't think because last time we didn't I didn't play that bad no. Uh, no, honestly, last session, the rhythm was more difficult because we was counting semiquavers and like the first half was just one and two and yeah, three. Know, but, but and then it was, was like one and two, e and a three and four and no, a but one. But now it was, yeah, it wasn't maybe difficult as much as it was more swingy or moody. Oh, what, this one? Yeah. Well, it's swing and really with this, it's just one and two, and three, and we're sticking to that. We're not chucking in any kind of more difficult rhythms. We just kind of stuck to no, that. No, but the actual swing can be tricky. Uh, that's the thing. Because if you play can be one tricky. and two, and then it's, as like, you said, yeah. It kind was, of straight and robotic, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that swing could be, I mean, again, luckily, I did lesson <laughs> with Matt, and he taught me how to swing. <laughs> and that's... Uh, yeah, I think that's something which I'm happy somehow my mind incorporated, you know, because that's why I got the feeling. Because otherwise, maybe it would have been probably like that. No, there's still a little bit of there's swing. Still, it's yeah, a yeah, it, it's funny because uh, now even if I don't want to be like uh, three and four and one and two and three and four. Yeah, and see, one it sounds. And two and Three and four and one and two Equal. and three and four and one. Yeah, but we've been going and one and two and three and four. Yeah, it really gives you that. Two and Floaty. three and four or waves. Two, two. Mr. Frodo, Mr. Frodo. Three, I'll carry you, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> Uh, let's try this. I'll play the chord progression through. Uh, well, because what we're counting as one is this. If I play it really quick. That's like one loop in my mind, which is two bars. And then we're playing. Well, then I do the same. So I'm thinking I'll play that twice. Then you come in. Mm. So I can, if I play it quickly, intro. play that again and then maybe I'll just go and then we play it twice or just okay, play yeah, it yeah, yeah, I wanna bang on so then it's like a bit of a structure yeah yeah okay 
three and four and Det var sist fan. Det var sist fan. I really felt it. I'm serious. Yeah, nice. It was like fuck. You know, this is fucking good. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Sorry. <laughs> That's good. It's yeah, fun. no, no, it was really, really nice. Jesus. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, it was interesting now because made making me count. You kind of. Mm, how to explain it? First, yeah, trying to blend with you but then I, you yeah you, i feel like you're getting more into the tune you know you're not the idea is a uh, mistake what i feel and probably yeah, because i'm i'm not experienced is uh you tend to focus on yourself yeah you know, it's like what yeah. i'm going to play like when when this would be like what you're playing and i'm coming in with you you know like because mm. we're working together spot on we're working together and this is where you need to service the song so what i mean by that is oil it, <laughs> yeah, oil it check up on it every three to four weeks phone in every now and then no so you have to think just don't only think about your part you got to think what will make this song sound the best if everyone is trying to do solos and show off that doesn't make for a good song and if I'm honest, in my first band, we was all just trying to show off how good we are or how good we were. And this, the actual songs weren't that good. <laughs> we're only individual songs, probably. <laughs> yeah, well, really, yeah. So you got to like, think... This is one song with three different teams. <laughs> yeah, so you have to be work as a team. So it might be, you know, the intro. That could be the time for someone to have the spotlight. But then you have to take a step back for when the vocals come in, you know. Uh, so it's always think about the bigger picture what will make the song sound the best because if everyone's kind of going for it it gets too busy and it won't be an easy song to listen to or a memorable song you know uh, but spot on it's teamwork you know so if everyone's trying to show off it doesn't make for a good song so trying to find people which are kind of happy to take a seat back or they understand it's like i don't have to be going for it for the four minutes or however long the song is uh, but, you know, you might have a little 20 second thing or a little guitar solo or whatever. That's that's enough. And that's what makes uh, a good structure for a song, you know. Uh, but spot on, like teamwork. That's, that's what it boils yeah. down to. Nice. EPs, here are coming. Yeah, three songs. Thank you again for Matt's uh, beautiful presentation and setup. We couldn't have this if it wasn't for all the magical work put into the filming and uh, lightning and everything mm. well but thank you. UK music follow 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 don't don't uh, i don't know run i'm oh, sorry it's but, nothing coming but no good melody <laughs> good ideas and i feel like you're getting quicker and better at kind of counting along picking up on it and putting it's it still all together, confusing you know? it's a confusing process but i yeah i somehow feel that's how it's supposed to be you know like because uh, yeah, the, the 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 when the mind starts to understand what you're actually saying or we are counting, then it's like ah yeah, and that's the polishing part, which I feel mm. yeah, I need to polish a lot myself because I'm messy. <laughs> cool. I hope you like this one, uh, and I'm sure there'll there'll definitely be a few more to come. Yeah, twenty uh, more albums. <laughs> well, honestly, once we've done ten and. Well, then you then have we're ideas. millionaires and yeah, with 10, 10 million subscribers and uh, <laughs> a lot of dislikes. <laughs> like, you guys are pretty bad at this, man. <laughs> you guys just like to talk crap. <laughs> no, no. 
Thanks yeah. for checking. If you've managed to last until this long watching the video, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I hope you found some value or some nice little tips and techniques. Or at least have water. No, nothing else. We're made out of water. Thank you. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs>